Hi everyone, Ronnie here. You're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where I talk you through cleaning your house. Thanks for joining me in today's episode. We're going to spend a little bit of time in each of the main areas of your home. We're going to put a dent in your housework. In case you're new to the show, I'm Ronnie. My daughter Jessica and I alternate episodes. So some episodes I talk you through cleaning your house and in some episodes it's my 28-year-old daughter. So you get kind of a different perspective from each of us. You can either pick your favorite of us and listen to our episodes or you can listen to both of us for variety. Anyway, let's get right into the episode. It's time to gear up for our cleaning session. You may want to light a candle or turn on your wax warmer, maybe take out your trash. If it's a nice day outside, maybe you want to open your windows and let some fresh air in. Another thing you may want to do at the beginning of a cleaning session is start a load of laundry. And for those of you who start a load of laundry at the beginning of the episode, I'll try to remember at the end of the episode to have you switch the clothes from your washing machine into the dryer. So this would be a good time to start a load. Um, I didn't used to do this, but Jessica kind of gave me the idea because she likes to start a load of laundry at the beginning of her cleaning sessions. And she kind of got me into doing things that way. Um, I A lot of times I talk about getting your machines running. And by machines, I mean your dishwasher and your washing machine. But don't t- tune me out if you don't have a working dishwasher. I know some of you are washing by hand. But if you have a dishwasher, you'll get that running kind of early on because Once we've geared up for our cleaning session, we're going to head to the kitchen. Another thing you might want to do right now is straighten up the front entrance area of your home. I know it kind of gives me anxiety to head to the kitchen and start cleaning if that front room is a disaster. Okay, At one house that I lived in, I had a large foyer area that I could just keep immaculate because the family room was kind of on the back of the house. You couldn't see the kitchen. So that was kind of convenient. But we don't always have that layout. In my current home, you walk right into my living room. So my entryway and my living room are one and the same. So it's important to have that area presentable in case somebody comes to the door. And of course, I'm only giving you a few minutes to gear up for your cleaning session. I'm not expecting you to do all of that at once. I'm just giving you some ideas because we all have different things. And I think it's not even just that we have different things. Different days call for different things at the beginning of a cleaning session. You know, maybe you really need to get a load of towels and underwear going to keep your household functioning. Or maybe you just really need to strip the sheets off of your bed and get those washing right now. Or maybe your front entry area is a disaster and you want to pick up. We will talk about picking up your living areas later in the episode, though. So it may just be time to start some laundry, get your house smelling good. I definitely like to, I forget to mention it on the show sometimes, but I definitely like to take out my trash, run my garbage disposal, you know, especially when I'm starting out in a situation where my house is kind of messy. I like to make sure that it smells good and that my front entrance area looks good. First impressions are everything, folks. But If this is just an ordinary day for you and you're not worried about the front entrance, starting a load of laundry will be great. And like I said, I'll remind you to switch that. So by now you've probably done whatever you needed to do to get started. Let's head to the kitchen. The kitchen is the heart of your home and maybe not all of your dishes are in the kitchen. 
If that's the case, you may need to quickly gather them from around the house. Maybe there is a mug on your nightstand or somebody left their dinner plate on the coffee table. Who knows? Um, it's time to gather up dishes either from around the house or around your kitchen. When I start cleaning my kitchen, I'm kind of doing two things at once. I'm moving dishes over to the sink area and I'm also throwing away any obvious trash. Um, it never ceases to amaze me how people unwrap containers, open things up, and leave the trash on my kitchen island. So a lot of times that's step one in cleaning up the kitchen is tossing that stuff that that's just left where it is. And when you live a busy lifestyle and you have a house full of people, you don't have time to micromanage stuff like that. Yes, I have rules in place. Um, throw away your trash as you go. Um, take your dishes to the sink. They're supposed to rinse off their plates and bowls and set them in the sink. Glasses I don't want in the sink. Glasses and mugs I don't want them to break, so I want them just set next to the sink. But you're supposed to rinse those out too. Set them there. Yes, there are rules in place. Yes, people forget to follow them. Okay. If you're new to the show, I have teenagers. And so, yeah, stuff happens. Um, not everybody in your house is going to follow your rules. You know, it could be a spouse or a significant other. It could be a teenager or it could be you. It could be that you're very distractible and you don't even really follow your own rules, so to speak. Um I definitely have rules for myself that are made to be broken. Um, one thing I talk about a lot on this show, again, just be working in your kitchen, gathering up your dishes so you can get started on that. But one thing I talk about a lot on this show is that the goal is to have better habits and better routines and work on those over time. However, this is a judgment-free show. You might be faced with a disaster. You may have procrastinated on doing your dishes for a while. That's okay. We're just going to start where you are because we all have those days. And, you know, sometimes we have a bad week, a bad day, or we've just kind of fallen off the wagon with our housekeeping. No judgment here. But this episode is going to be about establishing habits to make things easier in the future. So that's kind of the theme of the episode. It's time to get started on those dishes. By now you've gathered them up. Maybe you need to empty, reload, and run your dishwasher. Maybe you need to empty a drying rack and start uh, pre-rinsing that first sink load of dishes if you're going to be washing by hand. When I wash by hand, because from time to time, you know, my, my dishwasher won't be in working order or I've lived in houses where I don't have a dishwasher. And the way I do dishes when I'm in a situation where I'm doing dishes by hand, I make sure that my sink is clean starting out. And then I start with the glasses and cups. And then I do the silverware, then plates and bowls. And depending how many dishes I have, I, I definitely change the water. Okay, if you have, you know, if you're just doing dishes from one meal and there are two of you in your household or three, maybe, maybe you're not changing the dishwater or maybe you're just washing under one running water. But um, if you have like a family of five and there's been a couple meals since people have done the dishes, you may be facing what one of my listeners taught me to call a disaster. Okay, so you may need to change the water as you go. But the reason I, when I wash by hand, it's in a particular order is because I don't know. It just seems more sanitary to start with the glasses and the silverware, then the plates and bowls, and then end with like the pots and pans. Okay, so that's kind of the way I do it. But realistically, I'm changing the water part way through. Okay. So 
that's kind of my method for doing dishes by hand. Um, when it comes to my dishwasher, I have kind of a certain way that I do that that may be different than the way you do things. Um, I pre-rinse my dishes and just be working on your dishes. I just like to talk about dishes while you're doing dishes and then I'll probably go off on some rabbit trails. But the way I do it is I pre-rinse them under running water using a scrub brush. You know, it's like a, got a little handle and I like to do that to where I'm not really touching any gross stuff. I mean, that said, I don't really gross out on doing dishes. I don't know what it is, but like my teenage daughter and her older sister was the same way. The one right above her um, just didn't like sticking their hand into some dishwater. Like if there was dishwater from a previous session and someone didn't drain it, like they freak out about putting their hand in that like room temperature, dirty dishwasher to like pull the plug. If that's you, I guess that's the thing. A lot of people freak out about that, but I just pull the plug, rinse my arm under the hottest water I can stand and just move on. But that having been said, I do like to use a scrub brush with kind of a long handle for the pre-rinse even though I don't really, I'm not squeamish about doing dishes. I don't love doing dishes at all. It is definitely one of my least favorite chores, but I'm not squeamish about it either. But I still would rather have the brush on the handle instead of like cleaning with a rag or something smaller. So that's usually what I do. Um, but at the same time, I recently discovered a scrub daddy. So I might also grab that if something's not coming off and use that tool. Um, I like to have a few tools handy. And then of course I have a bottle brush handy cause I have a grandson and I got to clean out, you know, his bottles with the bottle brush before they go into the dishwasher to get sanitized. So anyway, I kind of pre-rinse things under running water and load them into the dishwasher. The thing that I do that's probably different than most people is I have a little, a small seasoning bowl, which is just my fancy name for a tiny bowl that I wedge in the top rack of the dishwasher and I put like an ounce of vinegar in there. Sounds crazy, but we have extremely hard water and I found out years ago that there's kind of a chemical balance when you're doing dishes and your dishwasher won't get everything clean if things are off. I'm not a scientist or anything, but that just kind of solved the problem. Yes, I use rinse aid in the rinse aid compartment. And yes, I use the most expensive dish pods, the, the Cascade Platinum Pods. This isn't any kind of an advertisement, but just if you live in these parts, if you know, you know, we're in the Permian Basin and there are a lot of minerals here and just our water's different. And you've got to use the Cascade Platinum Pods. And you've got to use that little bit of vinegar if you live out here or somewhere with similar issues. So most people won't need that tip. So I don't really talk about it in every episode. But just throwing that out there. We have a lot of new listeners, which I'm super excited about. So I'm kind of going back and talking about some things that I haven't mentioned in a while. My daughter Jessica the other day told me, Mom, if you say you talked about something a while back. It was probably a really long time ago because she knows that I started the show over four years ago. And I'll remember talking about something in an episode, but just time flies. And then I don't talk about it again for a while. So there was an episode where I went on and on about the whole dishwasher thing. Um, again, be working on dishes while I talk. This show isn't about me. It's about you. I'm here to keep you focused and on track while you work. So be working on your dishes, whatever that means for you. Maybe you have a few sink loads to do, um, or maybe, you know, you're doing an empty reload and run as I call it, just kind of rebooting your dishwasher. If you're ahead of the game though, and you don't have very many dishes, maybe you're like, I thought this was a cleaning show. I don't, I do my dishes after every meal. I'm here to clean. Great. Just be working on the kitchen because when we're done with dishes, we focus on the surfaces of the kitchen. So anytime you are listening to an episode and 
you either finish your dishes early or you don't have any dishes to do, just be working in the kitchen. Because kind of the way this show works is you go deeper in each episode. What I mean by that is, let's say you found this show because your home needs help right now for whatever reason. Um, you don't need an excuse, just your home needs help. You need, you've got a lot to do and that includes piles of dishes. You're probably not going to scrub the edges of your floors on your hands and knees today because the dishes are more pressing. But if you start listening to this show, spending 30 minutes to an hour listening to this show each day, or however often you can, maybe it's not every day, maybe it's every couple days, maybe it's twice a week, once a week, whatever your schedule allows, each time you're you're gonna you're gonna get more you're gonna get more done because you're not going to have this backlog of dishes, so to speak. So that's kind of the goal of this show. Now, I talked about establishing good habits. So what I want you to think about when you're working on your dishes, not feel I don't mean feeling guilty. Don't take this in the wrong way. Don't feel guilty about it. Okay? There's 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 a good reason why you're behind on dishes or maybe there isn't. But that's not what I mean. What I mean is think about I'm not going to do this to myself as often going forward. Notice I'm very realistic with this show. I'm not going to say like, if you listen to my show, you're going to get to the point where you're the perfect housekeeper. You wash every dish as soon as you eat off of it. And, you know, your house is going to be spotless from here on out. No, it's not. But things are going to get better. But at the same time, like you may fall off the wagon. You may listen to the show for a while and... It will revolutionize your housekeeping, but then you might go through a busy season of life or maybe a time where you're kind of depressed or whatever, and you'll need to start over. That's how it is with a lot of things in life. Um, I, I've Whether you agree with this concept or not, Dave Ramsey method of like finances, I've listened to that off and on, and kind of the same principle applies. Like, You'll go through these baby steps to get out of debt. You'll do all the things. But a lot of times something will happen in your life circumstances. And maybe you'll lose all that progress you made on your finances. And you'll have to start over with the first baby step of like setting aside an uh, an emergency fund. And then the second baby step of like, you know, paying, paying off the smallest credit card bill or whatever, you may have to start over. And that's just how life is sometimes. It's like that with your housework too. Obviously the consequences aren't as serious. You know, getting behind on dishes is kind of easier to get out of than getting into debt. But the same principle applies where you do all the right things, you make progress, you chip away at things, but sometimes you're just back to square one. Okay. But all that having been said, While you're working on dishes, think about changes that you're going to make in the near future going forward to where you won't have as many dishes to do in your next session. Think about what you can do differently, okay? You know, maybe you need to delegate dishes, have certain kids take turns doing it if you have kids, or maybe if it's you... Um, you could commit to doing things a little bit differently at dinner time. I feel like a lot of the dishes are generated at dinner time because let's face it, most of us are not really cooking like a full like three or four course breakfast every morning. You know, I cook a big breakfast maybe once a week. That's how I grew up. You know, maybe on Saturday or Sunday, there was like bacon and eggs and biscuits or something. You know, a lot of times we make potatoes. I didn't really grow up with that for breakfast, but in our household, a lot of times the breakfast involves potatoes. Once, maybe twice a week, typically on the weekends, we'll do a big breakfast, but we don't do it all the time. Lunch sometimes 
is me pulling out like an Uncrustable out of the freezer, thawing it out, scarfing it down while I work, um, kids bringing lunches to school, the sandwiches. So, you know, even, even when kids eat a bowl of cereal in the morning, it's just one bowl and one spoon for each of them. You're not generating tons of dishes typically for breakfast and lunch. For a lot of us, it's dinner. Okay. Dinner's the culprit. So be thinking about ways to do things differently at dinner time. And it's probably been at least a year since I've talked about this or more. But for a while, I was on this kick where when I would cook dinner, I would transfer the dinner into serving dishes. It seems counterintuitive. You may be thinking, what? No, we serve it right out of the pan so we don't dirty more stuff. But stick with me here. If you typically have leftovers, you know, if it's your style to make a little extra, either because you want to make sure there's enough or because you want to be able to reheat the leftovers, maybe for lunch the next day, bring them to work or reheat them if, at home if you're home during the day. So if if that's you, I mean, if you literally eat everything that's in the pan, okay, maybe maybe don't transfer to a serving dish. But here's why I went through a phase of transferring things into a serving dish. It's easier to wash your pots and pans while they're still hot. Okay, by the way, you may be done with your dishes by now. If so, it's time to clean the surfaces in your kitchen. Um, Clean your sink. Clean the area around the sink, the back of the sink. Even if you had to leave a pot soaking, you can still clean and shine up your sink. Okay, Um, wipe down your stovetop. Wipe down your countertops, including your island if you have an island. Maybe you need to wipe down your table. And then lastly, maybe you need to sweep or kitchen Um, sweep your kitchen floor but keep in mind like you could also save any sweeping and mopping or sweeping and vacuuming till the end of the episode and then like you know maybe listen to some music while you vacuum or sweep your entire house because I don't know what combination of hard floors carpets you have or if you even have carpet but maybe you want to save the floors till the end Or maybe you want to sweep your kitchen floor as part of your kitchen session because you're going to use a vacuum in the other areas. But I've given you some time to do dishes. That said, if all you get done during this episode is get caught up on your dishes, great. Listen to another episode tomorrow and the dish session won't take as long. You see what I'm saying? But it might be time for you to work on the surface areas of your kitchen And it's always good to wipe things down from the top down. So if you're wiping down your cabinets or something, you do that. Then the countertops, you know what I mean? Then the appliances, then the floors, you know, kind of work your way down. And of course, you know, bonus chores. If you're ahead of the game, clean out the inside of your microwave. Okay. I have a whole episode uh, dedicated to cleaning out the refrigerator. If you want to look that up sometime. But so the the thinking behind the serving dish thing and what i mean by serving dishes for me that means these rectangular glass casserole dishes i guess you could say that you can put them in the oven but then they usually have a lid you can put on them to put them into the fridge if you don't have a lid you could still put like some saran wrap or cover it that way but basically the kind of a glass casserole dish that you might cook a lasagna in or something I went through a phase where I would put my hot food into that and the reason was so that before I even sit down to eat I could wash the pots and pans and you might be thinking like oh I don't want to do that no 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 when the pots and pans are still hot and you just dump the food out of them into this serving container they're super easy to clean no scrubbing involved. I'm talking about when you're cooking something on the stove top. Like let's say that you made spaghetti. Okay, for example, you've got this large skillet where you browned your meat and then you heated up your jarred sauce or maybe you made some sauce from scratch, but you had your meat and your spaghetti sauce simmering there 
and then you had another pasta pot where you boiled the noodles okay um if you put those into serving dishes and you know you could even put the spaghetti off to one side and the sauce off to one side in a large rectangle the reason i say that is because I'm kind of of that school of thought where I don't like to mix the spaghetti with the sauce before serving it. People tend to like it more, in my experience, if they can put the spaghetti on the plate and then kind of decide on their amount of sauce. Okay. So, and it just, it looks more festive that way, I guess. But you would put it into the serving dish, even if the noodles are kind of on the other side from the sauce. Okay. Then that pan is really easy to clean. But if that pan just sit, sits out on the stove for a while, that tomato sauce, you know, everybody eats and then you just kind of leave it there. Then later you're like, I need to put, you know, two hours later, you're like, I need to put that spaghetti sauce in a container so I could put it in the refrigerator. Then th the spaghetti sauce residue is kind of dried onto that pan. And you're going to need like a little scrubbing tool or something when you go to wash it. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's so easy to clean when you your pan is still hot and you put it under the hot water. Everything's just going to rinse right off. Yes, you're going to wash it with soap, but there's going to be little to no scrubbing needed. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're cleaning that stuff when it's still hot. So if... So when I say a serving dish, I don't mean a dish just for serving. That's going to double as the container that you store the leftovers in. I'm just saying while you're still standing there, hey, dinner's ready, everybody. Quickly wash those pans. And then after everybody eats, the serving dish with the remaining food gets covered and placed in the refrigerator. I'm not saying you have to do that. That's just an example of doing something different going forward. Because remember I said, think about how you can avoid doing this to yourself in the future. You don't want to face a disaster again for a while. So that's a possible solution. But for you, it might be a different solution. You might decide on something else. You might just decide on... I'm going to start washing dishes after every meal because it's a lot easier. And the same principle kind of applies to washing dishes after every meal because, again, it, there's the issue with stuff being dried on. I mean, if you're cleaning your breakfast plate before you go to bed, there's going to be some scrubbing involved. But if you cleaned it as soon as you finished eating, there wouldn't. Okay. So just something to keep in mind. And I'm not being judgy here, like, why do you have these dishes piled up? It's just something that I, I kind of do. I kind of have that thought process when I have a lot of dishes that I'm washing. Just, you know what? I think next time I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And then you turn over a new leaf for a while. Okay? So just a thought there. We've spent enough time in the kitchen Hopefully you got your dishes done, wiped down some surfaces, and maybe even swept. But if not, that's okay. And there's no right or wrong list way to listen to this show. If you want to just keep working in the kitchen, you can. But many of you are ready to move on to another area. So it's time to head to the outer areas for those who are cleaning along with the show. And another tip for listening to this show in case you're new... I can obviously talk faster than you you can clean, so don't get frustrated if you're not doing the exact thing I'm talking about. But what I would like you to try to do, if you can, is just try to be working in the room that I'm talking about. Because for some of us who are distractible, it can help sometimes to stay in one room, to force yourself to work in one room or one area for a set amount of time because otherwise sometimes you go to put something away and you get sidetracked and you don't make it back to the room you were working in 
Okay. And I have some episodes about cleaning in layers where you kind of just flit around your entire house. First you throw away all the trash, then you dust, then you vacuum. You know, that's a thing. But on most days, I've found that it's better to force myself to stay in a room or an area and make some progress there. And what I mean by a room or area, we're going into what I call the outer areas, okay? That could include a living room, a family room, a hallway, just those common areas of your home that are not the kitchen or the bathroom. And if you have a larger home, you may not be able to clean all of your outer areas in one of these sessions. So you may just want to pick one. You may want to pick a living room or a family room. But for me, when I'm, a lot of the terminology I use on this show is based on how I delegate delegate chores to my kids. And I'll say like, I need you to do an outer areas pickup. Okay, so Maybe you want to do an outer areas pickup in your home right now. In our house, that means picking up clutter from the entryway and living room, which are kind of one and the same, and the one hallway that we have at our house. Okay? Again, you might have multiple living areas and hallways. We have just this living room and hallway. Those are called the outer areas. An outer areas pickup means picking up everything off the floor first because to me that's the most glaring problem is just stuff on the floor looks the worst but then once you've cleared the floor turn your attention to surfaces that have clutter on them maybe an end table has something sitting on it that doesn't belong there obviously you might have certain items that belong like a house plant a lamp coasters a remote control Those are things that probably belong on an end table or maybe a coffee table. But you may have some things just sitting out that need to be put away. You may also want to straighten your couch cushions and throw pillows. So, yeah, in any living area or family room, I start by picking up the floor, then clearing tables, and then straightening up the couches themselves. Um... I used to always talk about straightening the couch cushions because I had the type of cushions where they would get kind of moved out of place by the kids or whatever and like the cushions weren't even in place. Now, thankfully, I have couch cushions that stay put. So the only thing is just clearing anything off the couch that doesn't belong there for us and then just arranging the throw pillows nicely. The throw of pillows might not seem important, but it's a nice finishing touch that shows you clean the room when you have them kind of like sitting diagonally in the corner. And I feel like staging is my favorite part of cleaning a room. You know, positioning the little knickknacks and the pillows. That's kind of my reward for removing the clutter. Um, You may also need to do some dusting. In your living area. Um, Maybe you need to wipe down. Your coffee table. End table. Or something else. Like the thing that gathers the most dust. In our. Well the things that gather the most dust. In our living room. Are the piano. The TV. And the TV stand. Those items need need to be dusted. I don't dust them in every cleaning session. Um, you know, just sometimes you dust, sometimes you don't, but I was taught growing up that what makes your house look clean as far as your living room, vacuum and dust. It does make a huge impact. So don't put off the dusting for too long. Maybe this isn't a day that you're going to dust, but if it's not, don't put it off for too long. It is a great finishing touch and just gives the room a really nice feel. If you need to wipe down your TV screen, I like to use a microfiber cloth with just slightly dampened with just pure water. Obviously, if your kids have been, you know, if you have toddlers that touch the TV with like peanut butter fingers or something, I don't know. I realize things happen when you have kids. If your TV is really gross or something, you might need to use a product. But for most of us, you just need like a slightly dampened microfiber cloth. I found that that's the easiest way to get the TV clean without any streaks that are going to affect the visual experience. 
and then usually once I've dusted the TV, then I just use that same cloth to dust the stand that it's sitting on. So um, a bonus chore is when I have you do something that doesn't need to be done as often, but I just throw it out there. You know, maybe you your kids had toys all over the living room and you were just picking those up. But if you're ahead of the game, a bonus chore could be to clean a window sill in just one window or to clean the inside of just one window. I mean, just think if in every cleaning session, every one hour cleaning session that you did with me, you clean just one window. I mean, eventually every window would be clean and you wouldn't even have to do it all at once and it wouldn't be that grueling. Maybe you have a mirror that you need to clean. Maybe you have pictures that need to be dusted, knickknacks that need to be dusted. Maybe you have a piece of furniture that I didn't mention. Um, in my living room, I've got a piano. I've got a TV stand and a TV. I've got one end table, one coffee table, um, three window sills we could dust, three sets of mini blinds for those windows. I have a ceiling fan that we dust once in a blue moon. Um, you know, so those are just some ideas of things that might need to be done. Um, if you are overwhelmed with toys and your kids play in the living room, no judgment here. I know some people are like, oh, your kids shouldn't have any toys in the living room. Sometimes that's not realistic because a lot of times your living room or family room is where you can see it from the kitchen. So that might be a convenient place for your kid to play. Like if you have small children like while you're in working in the kitchen or in and out of the kitchen and then you can still see them or, you know, you and your husband are sitting there watching TV or whatever and your kid is playing toys. Um, yeah, I understand. A lot of times I have this like corral thing set up. I call it a corral, but it, I eventually, I originally got it to kind of be like a playpen area for some puppies but now I use it for my grandson so that he can crawl around on the carpet he can pull himself up to his stand but he's contained with this little gated area you know so I don't have to worry about him going to an area of the home that's not baby proofed or you know finding something on the floor it's like okay there's nothing in this little corral that he's not supposed to have it'll be right in the middle of my living room I'll fill it up with his toys and that way I can see him. I can be doing other things, but also watching him and keeping him right where I want him. So yeah, a um, little tip, look up a pet playpen or something if you need one. But I don't like it in my living room all the time, but a lot of times I put it out there if I need to be out there while I'm babysitting. Um, sometimes I also put it in, in my bedroom. So, you know, that's an option. But all that to say, no judgment if you have to have toys in your living room because that's where your kids need to play. I get it. Um, but you need a toy box. I have a couple of these really cute canvas, like, basket things. It's like a wire basket that's, like, lined with canvas and part of it's got, like, wood on it or whatever. Those are really cute, and one of them is for, like, cords and um, gaming remotes and just different things like that, and then the other one's for actual toys. So, um, if you're new to the show, I am a mother of six, um, three are grown, three are still living at home. I'm also a grandparent, and I often babysit my grandson, who is almost 11 months old. So we do have a toy box. Even before I started babysitting him, I had a small toy box for when Jessica's girls come to visit. My oldest daughter has two kids. She's a co-host of the show. And yeah, I had a little toy box just for when they come visit because it's an attractive little part of my decor. Okay. Um, so... Yes, it's okay to have toys in the living room, but I would limit the number. And this isn't going to apply to all of you. Not everybody's in a stage of life where they need to have toys in their living room. But if you do, I would I would recommend keeping it in moderation. I wouldn't have every toy your kid has in a toy box in the living room because then 
you know, they might pull everything out of the toy box. Um, I've always been a fan of rotating some toys out of circulation so that there aren't too many. You can put some bins up in the top of a closet somewhere or out in the garage and just kind of rotate the toys in and out because you won't spend as much time picking up toys or asking your child to pick up toys or helping your child pick up toys if you keep a smaller toy box and limit the number of toys. That's not saying to get rid of perfectly good toys necessarily. I mean, you could do that. That's one way. Some people like to go minimal and, you know, they want to get rid of stuff. Fine. But another option is to just take stuff out of circulation and kind of rotate it. So when I talk about a, a toy box in the living room, I recommend a small one so that you can straighten up real quick, okay? I like to be only three, four, five minutes away from a straightened up living room. You know, if if I got it, just think about it. If you got a call that somebody said, I'm five minutes away, would you be able to pick up your living room, you know, clear it of all clutter within that time? If not, you may need to make some kind of a change, like rotate some toys out or something. So hopefully by now you've picked up your outer areas or at least one of the living areas in your home. And like I said, you could vacuum or sweep at the end of this episode. I feel like I don't listen to podcasts while I vacuum or sweep. I've surveyed listeners and a lot of you kind of use the podcast for the more tedious aspects of housework like dishes, picking up clutter, maybe dusting some surfaces, wiping down some surfaces. But those bigger jobs like sweeping, vacuuming and mopping You can always, you know, put on a couple of your favorite songs after the show and tackle those projects. I don't really like listening to earphones as much while I do that kind of stuff. Sometimes I like to just play some music out loud. But anyway, this show is a lot about the clutter aspects and the tedious parts of house cleaning. Okay? Getting you through those. I mean... Yeah, technically the vacuuming, the sweeping, and mopping are kind of the manual labor, the the heavier jobs of cleaning, but at the same time, they're not that tedious and they don't really take all that long. A lot of times it's just frustrating that it takes you so long to like clear the surfaces to get down to the cleaning, and I'm here to talk you through those tedious aspects of it. So hopefully by now you've done some work in the kitchen, you've done some work in your outer areas, let's head to a bathroom, okay? You may have two, one, two, three bathrooms in your home, but let's let's focus on just one bathroom. The first things that I do when I get ready to clean a bathroom, I will empty the trash, I will pick up any clutter off the floor. Again, no judgment here if there's laundry on the floor or whatever, towels, pick that up. That's one of those things where it's like, wait, going forward, um, let's not just drop our laundry in the bathroom floor if that's an issue or let's make a rule about this. Sometimes I'll kind of do a thing where I'll create incentives for the kids, Um, you know, hey, I can tell who leaves their clothes in the bathroom and you're going to get a deduction and allowance if you don't pick up your clothes after your shower or whatever. Um, Another thing that I've done at times is how to hamper in the bathroom. Unfortunately, the kid slash, we have two bathrooms in our house and the hall bathroom that's the kid bathroom slash guest bathroom is kind of small. There's not really room for a hamper. I've I've gone through phases where I put a hamper in there, but it's just a little less than ideal. So we end up keeping the hamper in the laundry room. Even our laundry room is a little small for a hamper, truth be told. But possible solution, depending on the size of your bathroom, is to keep a hamper in there if people are putting their clothes on the floor. Um, make a rule. 
do what you have to do. But for now, let's just get that picked up. So pick up any clutter off the floor, take out the trash. Then you might want to remove things just to kind of clear the area. Things that are where they're supposed to be, but they need to be moved. Maybe you have bathroom rugs. Um, you can move those out in the hallway or maybe take them to the laundry room if you're going to wash them. Um, you may have some things that you need to clear off of the countertop, like your toothbrush holder, um, your soap, you, you know, whatever it is, curling iron, whatever it is you keep on your countertop. Um, maybe the, maybe you can put those items in a cupboard or a drawer, or maybe you want to just set them aside somewhere, but you want to kind of clear all your surfaces to get ready to clean your bathroom. Another thing you're going to need to do is get your tools and your products together. Um, you may need a glass cleaner for the mirror. Maybe you use something that's dual purpose. I definitely like to use something that's actually designed for glass on my mirror. Um, a lot of times I will use like a special toilet bowl cleaner. I kind of like those products that have the neck that goes up under the rim of the toilet. That's convenient where it squirts it up where it needs to go. Um, when you clean your toilet bowl, but then at other times I'm in like a frugal mo mode where I'm just getting like Comet or Ajax because it's cheaper. And then using the, you know, the toilet brush to get up there, I like to use the type of toilet brush that has a little tool. I mean, sometimes you, you you might just need to put on some gloves and like clean it by hand to really get up in there. But you need something to clean your toilet bowl, something to clean your mirror, something to clean your countertops. And some people like to use, you know, only one or two products for the whole bathroom. You might have like a cleaning caddy with all different things. You might keep cleaning products in your bathroom if you're not in a phase where you have to be like real baby proof. That's it. I definitely, if if you don't have small children coming around um, or living with you, it's super convenient to have like all the cleaning products in each bathroom because then you're more likely to just randomly start cleaning a bathroom like after doing your hair or something. So I am big on that, but maybe you need to go get, you know, maybe... You need to go get your cleaning caddy and bring in the cleaning products because it's not practical to have them, you know, in there because, you know, obviously safety first. Um, you don't want them within a small child's reach. But get those products together, whatever you need to do. Um, if you're new to the show, I don't usually go into cleaning the tub or the shower in the show because I'm really big on cleaning the tub or the shower when you take a shower or bath, kind of combining that session. And I don't mean obviously the, this quick shower when you're getting ready for work, but I'm talking on, you know, maybe a leisurely Saturday, 10, 11 a.m. I'm going to take a shower and clean the shower and you do it all at once. Or you take a bath and you clean the tub kind of as you're draining it and getting out of it. So I'm not going to get into cleaning your tub or shower. However, you may want to, you know, remove any old shampoo bottles or any clutter, excess clutter from your shower or tub that doesn't need to be in there. There could be something in there you need to toss or recycle. Um, so, yeah, you may want to put something in your toilet bowl and give that product a chance to do its work. Okay, while you move to the sink and countertop. That's the way I usually do it. I put something in the toilet bowl. Then I head over to the sink and countertop. I'll clean the sink and countertop and the faucets, scrub all that. You might need to use a toothbrush around the faucets if you have buildup. Old toothbrush, obviously. Um, and then... I do the mirror last because sometimes the process of cleaning the countertop and the sink splatters onto the mirror. So I do the mirror fat, uh, last and then I'll kind of with whatever I clean the mirror with. It could be um, Windex and a microfiber cloth. Okay. Or it could be paper towels, newspaper, whatever, whatever I use. I mean, sometimes you're just picking up an old t-shirt off the floor and clean your mirror with it. You know, I, I'm really big on not procrastinating 
or getting sidetracked just because you don't have the perfect item. Like, oh, I can't find a microfiber cloth or whatever, you know, grab an old t-shirt or something. You just want to get the job done. You can always, you know, we're talking about doing things differently going forward. While you're cleaning, you can always be thinking about, hey, I need more microfiber cloths. If that's what you like to use for your TV screen, your mirrors, you know, add that to your mental list or your ongoing grocery list on your phone notepad. If you're like me and you have kind of an ongoing list, you know, maybe in the future, there's a product that you wish you had right now. Don't let that sidetrack you to where you go on some wild goose chase looking for it, but maybe think about getting it going forward. Make it, maybe think about products and tools that would make it easier for you to clean your bathroom. Be working in your bathroom, whatever needs to be done. I basically clean the sink, countertop, um, faucets, and then the mirror, and then retouch the faucets. And then I clean the toilet. Not only do I scrub out the bowl, but of course I clean the seat behind the seat. Every single part of the exterior of the toilet. I get on, when I'm down on my hands and knees cleaning the base of the toilet, I clean the floor around it, the wall around it, um, everything else. Um, you might have people that miss, or if you don't, which we don't, but we do, you know, it does collect a lot of dust down there. Okay, and if anyone ever gets sick, they're going to be down on their hands and knees, you know, and they'll, they'll see that it's not clean down there. So, yeah. Anyway, um, and that's one of those things, too, just like with dishes. You know, the sooner you do it, the less you let it build up, the easier the job is. Um, another thing that people forget to do in their bathrooms, baseboards. So that's a ba bonus chore. Maybe scrub your baseboards, um, you know, if you're ahead of the game. And basically, when once everything's clean, you end with the floor and you kind of like mop your way out of the bathroom, so to speak. In a tiny bathroom, I literally clean the floor by hand. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but like in my guest bathroom slash kids bathroom, oftentimes I will grab one of those Swiffer wet jet like mop pads we buy those moisten pads I use them in my kitchen I will take one of those and clean the floor by hand with it I won't even have to sweep okay because I do it kind of like you know the principle when you're wiping down a countertop with like a damp let's say you're wiping off your kitchen countertop and there's like breadcrumbs on it or something toast crumbs how you would like wipe it with the damp rag and you'd be kind of grabbing up crumbs in the rag as you go, like to avoid brushing them onto the floor maybe. That's the same way that I clean a tiny bathroom floor, okay? And obviously you might do something differently. You might be like, no, I'm going to sweep and then I'm going to mop. Okay, I do sweep and mop in my bathroom, which has a larger expanse of floor. But in this small bathroom, I just take one of those moistened pads and I wipe the floor and it's basically, it's picking up the debris in the same swoop in one fell swoop or whatever. It's picking up the little debris and dust and also mopping. And I just do it on my, my hands and knees with those pads, with one of those pads. And it works, it works great. So that's the way I, I do that, um, in that bathroom, but it's only because the bathroom's real small. Obviously I'd, I'd rather use a broom on a larger area. I'm kind of big on doing edge work by hand. Like, you know, in the kitchen, for example, you sweep, you mop, but you need to sometimes go around the perimeter of the floor and scrub the baseboards and up under the cabinets. Um, same with a bathroom. If you're not doing the hands and knees method that I just mentioned, because maybe it's a bigger bathroom or you just don't like that method, you still do need to get down there and clean the edges by hand from time to time to wipe down your baseboards, to wipe down the edges of your floor up under the, um, under the cabinet or, you know, around the base of the toilet or what have you. So just be cleaning your bathroom, whatever needs to be done in there. Um, 
another bonus chore. I like to use disinfecting wipes. I mean, use whatever you use, but I like to use disinfecting wipes to wipe the light switches and clean the doors, the door frames, especially around the doorknob area, you know, and again, the light switches, those areas get a lot of fingerprints and whatnot. Okay, let's move on to another area. Um, we have a few minutes left. If you haven't made your bed yet today, no judgment here. Maybe it's time to make your bed and straighten up your bedroom. I mean, it's always nice to have your entire house clean at once. So even though there's there's a tendency for a lot of us to prioritize the outer areas, the kitchen, the guest bathroom, you know, that's all crucial and everything, but it's also nice to have a freshly made bed and clean towels in your bathroom. You know, maybe if your significant other's coming home, it would be nice to have a clean towel hanging in the bathroom and the bed freshly made. Or maybe you just need to pick up some articles of clothing and put them in the hamper that are on your bedroom floor or put your shoes in the closet. Or how about this? Maybe you need to do some pet chores. Like maybe you need to put your little dog bed in the washing machine or change the litter box. Okay. Don't forget about those pet chores. Maybe you need to do something outside like sweep your front porch or your back patio. Just a reminder of something you could maybe do after the episode or in these last few minutes. Special thanks to my financial supporters. Jessica and I each have a Patreon where people can support us financially. We don't expect anyone to do it, but we're super grateful when you do. You kind of get some insider stuff in there. I sometimes post things in there that I don't necessarily put out publicly or whatever. You know, the type of picture that I might post on my personal p Facebook, I might also put it in the Patreon. So if you don't know me in real life and you're not on my Facebook, then you could do that. Um, you could, you know, sign up for Patreon to kind of get that insider view. Um, sometimes we do bonus content in there. We obviously focus on our regular episodes more, but approximately at the time of this recording, approximately once a month, I'll record like a bonus episode and I'll put it in both of our Patreon groups. Not a guarantee or anything, but sometimes I do put a little bit of bonus content in there. Um, also, I want to thank everyone who has posted a positive review. Unfortunately, there's not a way to, to reply to that. When you review the show on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast app you listen on, um, there's not always, especially on Apple, there's not a way to reply. And if it's on another app, I may not have even seen it yet, but I do read every review on Apple Podcasts because that's something that I look at regularly and I do appreciate those. It makes me feel good that, that the show is helping so many of you. So thank you so much for reviewing the show. But most of all, just thank you for listening. Um, don't forget to click on the subscribe or follow button so that you'll be notified of any new episodes. Um, when you listen to a podcast, if you're kind of new to podcasts, you may not you may not realize exactly how it works. But if you listen to podcasts, the app like the Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you know, it might keep suggesting a show to you because it, it realizes you've listened to it before. But ideally, you want to click follow or or subscribe so that you'll be notified whenever there is a new episode. And that helps us as well when you do that. Again, I can't always reply to the reviews, but I'm so grateful when I see them. And thank you so much for those. I mentioned pets. What about plants? Maybe you need to water a plant 
This is your reminder. For some reason, I tend to water plants when I'm cleaning. That's when I think about it the most. I'm just kind of more aware of my surroundings when I'm cleaning. So, you know, there's pet chores, there's plant chores, and those are good finishing touches um, to do. And I touched on this, but don't forget about like your front porch, your back patio. Those are all important too. So don't forget about the exterior of your home. Be sure to tune in again on Wednesday for our regularly scheduled episode. And as always, happy cleaning. I'll talk to you soon.